Hi everyone. I just wanted to uh, do a new video, one that's a little bit easier to listen to and to follow along for the in the box nine box template. Um, I do majority of my editing in Lightroom. I just find it easier. So I do all my edits here and then uh, what I do is just select the photos that I want to send into Photoshop. Um, so along the bottom here I've selected, I'm just going to do five for now. And I usually do just control E on my um, computer. I don't have a Mac, so just on my Windows computer. I think it's command E for Mac, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then that exports those photos exactly how I have them into Photoshop. My computer's a little bit slower, so I did this pre uh, the video so it didn't take so long. Um, so I have my five photos in here along the top. And then I also have my nine box grid open. Um, and you can see along the side over on the right hand side is all my layers. I just closed them and you can open them up and it, they're very easy to work with. Now if you're working with elements and you've downloaded the elements package, you won't have all of these folders. It'll all just be um, individual layers that you'll have to sift through, but everything is labeled so you can go through and find them easily and uh, import your pictures. So firstly, I'm going to use over at the side, the left hand side or however you have your setup, um, the marquee tool. So it's this one over here. And all I do is I drag around my picture because I've already pre-cropped it in Lightroom. So I drag around my picture and then I go to the move tool just click in the picture and I literally pick it up and drag it into my nine box. And I do that for all of my photos before I do any kind of editing, any kind of resizing. I take all my photos, drag them in one by one. Sometimes if I'm not exactly sure which ones I want in, um, maybe the client says I can pick whatever I want. I might drag you know, 10 or 11 photos in and kind of play with them. Um, but for the most part I have nine, drag them in to my box and now I'm pretty much done with those ones up top because they're all in my box now. And as you can see, for me, they've all come into the top layer, like they're above all the other uh, layers and groups. Sometimes if say you've clicked down here, maybe you were working in the second row like on this one here and now you import your pictures, what it's going to do is put all your pictures exactly where you were working last. So you may import all your pictures and be like, where did my pictures go? Uh, meanwhile, they are maybe down in the second row or the third row. So they might partially be hidden um, behind some of the grid lines or other boxes. So just make sure if you can't find them, just double check your folders. Most likely it's hidden somewhere um, and just drag them back up to the top. So they're the very top layer and you can see everything. Uh, now what I do is I highlight all of my pictures I've brought in just by using like clicking and shift and then I click on the bottom one it highlights all of them and I go to edit and free transform and you can see it brings the box around all my pictures and what I do is I hold shift that way it keeps the aspect ratio and I just kind of do a really quick rough estimate on where I think the picture should be. So I kind of just base it on the gray box there. I make it a tiny bit bigger because I've noticed I have a bit of a space on the right hand side. My box isn't perfectly straight or I don't know, clearly I don't shoot perfect. Um, so I make it a little bit bigger so I have room to use my warp tool. Once I have them where I want I just press enter so it does its thing and it drops them into where they should be. And now what I want to do is on each layer of my picture, I click on it up at the top and move it to where I want it. So say I want, you know what, I want this one in the middle here. So I'm moving that picture, but now seeing that's on the second row, I'm going to take this layer, picture layer, and I'm going to literally drag it down into the second row over top of that gray uh, square right there that I was using. And as you can see, it literally put it under the grid lines. So I'm going to do that for all my photos. 
gonna put this one up here, move it there. This one's a dangling leg, so I'm gonna stick it up in the top right corner. So I'm gonna put it over the top right gray box. This one here, she's handing down, so I'm gonna put it over the left hand side. And that's the top left hand. So then that means this one here, because she's reaching for it, is gonna go down to the bottom. I'm gonna expand that folder and bring that one down to the bottom to cover the top one. So now I have my pictures where I want them pretty much. So from this point, I usually increase my screen size to about 50%. I'm working on a fairly large screen. So depending on what you, uh, what kind of screen you use, you may need to change it. And now I'm just going to work on each picture individually. So I line it up. So again, I'm working in the top row on that first picture. Line it up to where I want it, which is kind of close there and now what I've been doing is I bring down the ruler from up there from up top if you don't have the ruler tool I highly recommend it you can go under view and then just click on rulers or you can see control R or I believe it's command R um, and this is going to help you make sure all of your inside box lines are lined up properly so now I'm going to go edit, transform, and warp, and it puts a little box around. And all I'm going to do is literally drag them to make sure all of my corners are matching up in my box. And you can also use your ruler tool for the inside boxes too. So you can see it's not completely lined up because I've done some warping. So now I just have to very very subtle warps no one would ever notice it in the picture it's really just uh, making sure everything's lined up properly and once I'm done I press enter and now I'm done with that photo so I'm not gonna do them all because it's gonna take too much time but what I'm going to go to is I'm going to go sorry I'm gonna scroll back up and I'm gonna work on this one quickly for you which is the masking one so I'm going to do the same thing, edit, free transform, drag it around to where I want it, I like it there, Go edit, transform, now I'm going to warp it to make sure all of the uh, lines are lining up where I want them, I'm just kind of play around with it, now I'm doing this really quick so I can do it for the video, um, I always make sure for my clients that I take my utmost time to make sure everything's perfect and so that's it now what I normally do because I like to do things quick I'm still on my layer picture over here now I go into my marquee tool and I just select the part of the picture that I don't want like I did there with the dancing ants press delete voila it's gone and then I do control D to deselect might be command D on your Mac I do the same thing over here. Highlight with your marquee, so your dancing ants. Delete. Control D. And now all I have left to do is this tiny little space. So I'm going to add a mask, which is down here, the square with the black circle. And it puts a mask over beside your picture. Now you want your brush, and you want to use your... Sorry, my brush takes a little bit of time. You just want a normal round brush. Mine is set to chalk right now, or watercolor, so... Sorry it's taking a little bit longer than normal. My computer's a little bit slow today. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush into round. I'm going to leave it at a 100% opacity, 100% flow. And for my mask, because I have a white screen here over on the, white, on the right, I want to make sure I'm using a black brush. So I'm going to choose that one there. I want the black brush because black conceals, white reveals, if that helps. That's how I remember. So all I'm going to do is literally start concealing or brushing away what I don't want here. 
So again, I'm just going to do this really, really fast to show you guys how to do it. I normally, I zoom in, I get real close, make sure everything is, you know, masked properly. I mask in between the legs. Again, ignore what I did there. You take your time. Use smaller brushes if you need to. Um, one of the biggest tools I've found is the bracket tool, square brackets. Um, if you do the left square bracket, it reduces your brush. Right square bracket makes your brush bigger. Now what I want to do is I need to get rid of this grid line here because her legs are hanging out of the box. So I go up to my box grid lines, and this is a horizontal one, so I'm going to click on my horizontal and it is the second row. So you've got your top, middle, which is down below, and then second row. If you just click the eyeball there, you can see the grid lines disappearing, and that's the one you want. So you're going to add a mask, same thing, same brush, black brush. Literally, you're just now concealing or brushing away that part of the grid line. And again, take your time on this. Make sure everything is lined up. Zoom in if you need to. I'm just doing it super quick for the video. And that's how you mask off things like that. So I would do the same for all my pictures, but I'm going to run out of time. So I'm just going to do that for now. I'm going to take it back into a 35%. Or sorry, actually, I'm going to do a 25% of screenshot. And now you can see how our box is starting to look. Things are lining up and if for some reason um, in this particular picture over on the right hand side uh, maybe I think it's a little bit too dark what I do is I go into filter camera raw filter and what it does is it brings up the um, picture in raw format so I can go in and actually change the exposure, the contrast, things like that, just to that specific picture, which makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to bump up the exposure a little bit because I think it needs that, and maybe bump up the contrast. You can play with your color balance if it's off a bit. Maybe it was a little bit yellow. Add a tiny bit of blue. I'm just going to click OK, and what it'll do is actually transform that picture to what I just did and voila so that's done now maybe this picture down here on the left the second one down i'm thinking needs a little bit of work too same thing same issues i'm going to go filter i'm just going to click on camera raw at the top and it's going to put the exact same filter on that i just did to the other picture in a matter of seconds so from here, what I'm going to do, uh, say I'm done, I'm going to do File, I'm going to do a Save As, and you're going to find where you want to put it, wherever you put your pictures, and you can save, I highly recommend saving as a PSD, so your Photoshop um, template, your PSD, just in case somebody needs changes done, because you do not want to go back in and redo it. So save as a PSD. And then also go in and save as your JPEG. That's going to be what you send to your clients. Client test. And I'm just going to actually save it on my desktop. And so you save it. And this template is designed for, it says 20 by 20. Um, and you always do a quality of 12 maximum. Now, I think I have a few minutes left. If you wanted to quickly resize this canvas to maybe print smaller maybe you wanted to do like a 10 by 10 and weren't sure whether the square was going to work all you do is where you go image canvas size you can change this 10 10 and what it's going to do is shrink your canvas size so yeah i know it's, you know it's going to need to be resized so uh oh it's done some crazy stuff so all I do here is I start at the very top over on the right hand side to the very, very bottom layer, shift and click so everything's highlighted, edit, free transform, I usually shrink my screen a bit, sorry about that sound, and then you literally just drag it 
and now you can fit it to the canvas size you just made. This works for any photo you do, like any in the box grid. Um, 